All right, good morning, everyone. I just heard from my technician team that we are now live. A big welcome to the Zero Project family, and it truly is a big global family which we have with us today. So we have over 3,400 participants all from around the world tuning in. And uh, we are really fortunate to have all these disability inclusion champions with us. And in order to make our conference happen, over 90 hours of content on three simultaneous TV channels, we can only do that with partner organizations such as uh, Iris Bond. So I really want to take this moment to thank our trusted partners because they really have come together, pooled their resources, pooled their efforts to pull off these great partner channel sessions. So um, I'm really thankful for uh, what, what Iris Bond has put together here and uh, just want to extend a big and warm thank you from the entire Zero Project team. And I'll leave it at that. And uh, the stage is yours. And we all look forward to a wonderful partner channel session. Thank you very much. Eduardo, I think that you are on mute. We cannot hear you. <laughs> so can you hear me now? Yes, now we are here. <laughs> That's, that's life problems, <laughs> as usual. <laughs> so, Tim, thank you very much for your words. Thank you for the support of uh, the Zero Project organization and, and, and for considering Iris Bond as a trusted partner, no? uh, as, as a provider of innovative solution at the end to get a, a, a world with zero barriers. So we are very aligned and very committed with the Zero Project. I'm very happy to see that uh, despite of the pandemic, uh, we can do it online, virtually, and, and the quality of the of the sessions uh, can be fantastic. No, and, and and I'm very happy today to announce that we have a very very uh, interesting uh, panel today, very aligned with the with the theme of employment employment and ICT that that the Zero Project is trying to promote. Today, we would like to discuss about the topic of uh, in and in towards a more inclusive workplace. And for that, we are considering and we are taking into account a very interesting and promising companies. You know, we are a, have a, a round table that for sure will be very, very, very interesting. And, and we would like also to, to engage all the people in the audience to, to give us the, the feedback, to, to send questions, and we will try after the session to, to answer to that. No? So uh, let's go to the topic. Uh, first of all, uh, let me to introduce the, the high panelists we have now. Uh, with us today is Jesus Hernández Galán. Jesus is the Accessibility and Innovation Manager at Fundación 11. And let me explain Fundación 11 what it is. Uh, for people that maybe from abroad that doesn't uh, know properly what they, they, they are. Fundación 11 is the largest foundation in Spain, and the mission is to carry out job training, integration, and employment programs for persons with disabilities, promoting the creation of environments, products, and services that are global accessible. Wow. So, Jesus, very welcome to be here today. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, maybe we are the, the biggest organization of people with disability working uh, with uh, people uh, with disability to improve the quality of life of, of us. Uh, we are around uh, 70,000 people. Uh, I think there are no other other organizations la like us. And uh, our income is around is more than uh, 2,000 million euros per, per year. So we are we are the one of the biggest, not just in Spain, maybe all around the world. Thank you. As you can see, a big, big uh, organization. So we have uh, Ana González Talaban, who is a manager of customer success at Microsoft. Uh, Ana has a large experience in Microsoft, and as she said, helping people to carry out their full potential. Ana, very welcome to be here today. Thank you very much, and thank you for being uh, uh, being invited. Okay, so in representing Microsoft, but I think that I'm representing all the companies that. Uh, that we are so committed, okay, to be sure that we are creating an inclusive digital transformation where the technology could play a really, really good thing, but people are the ones who are the, that we have the power. Okay, so let's talk about how we can build uh, uh, this uh, uh, good opportunity in our brand. Thank you, Eduardo. Thank you, Ana. 
And, and last but not least, we have uh, Lara Moraton Gutierrez. Lara is the accessibility manager at Samsung Electronics. Samsa, Sara, uh, Lara, sorry, is, uh, has a PhD in linguistics and is responsible of voice assistance in Samsung. Lara, very welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me here with my two nice colleagues here. We're going to share this uh, exceptional session, I'm so sure. Um, about following the, the lead of what Anna said already, it's technology that is going to make the difference, but it's people who is going to make it really. So let's go for it. Thank you, Lara. So as you can see, we have a great panel today, a round, round table, which in one hand, we have, we have a, a big organization that takes care about inclusion and demands technology. And on the other hand, we have big corporations as Samsung and Microsoft that are providers of technology, but also because of the commitment with inclusion, they have their own processes in their companies to work in the policies of labor inclusion as well. So we, I think we have a very interesting uh, speakers and let's go to the point then. Today, we are going to talk about the uh, labor inclusion and how we could design the workplace for fully compatible, fully, fully inclusive. So, but the first question is why we should consider people with disabilities in this hiring process? I think the answer is because if we do not, we are losing about 15 or 20 percent of uh, loyal talent, qualified talent in the workplaces. So that's not that. So going to the next point, what we are trying to do today is to go into the process of uh, recruiting. I mean, we define the process as a three steps, basically, when we design the job offer. Then we do the interview with the employee or the future employee. And at the end, we have the employee into the company. We have to adapt the workplace for this. So let's work on these uh, three topics, three steps, and let's define a journey. As you can see in my back, there is a, a screen. We have a colleague, Javi, which is working in drawing a picture of all this process. So every every step, every 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 stage, we will stop and go to have his drawing to see how is the process uh, improving, to, to understand which are the thoughts and inputs our candidates are throwing to the, to, the, to, the, to the panel. And at the end, we will get a full picture of a 100% inclusive workplace. So let's go to the point uh, exactly. Uh, let's talk about the first topic, the designing of the job offer. So, Jesus, what we should consider when we start designing a an, an, an job offer? Oh, I think it's important to consider all the capabilities of the of the um, applicants uh, because we, uh, we have to work in a multimodal uh, uh, way. We have to design uh, the the offer thinking people we can uh, um, we can see or we can hear. So we have a, we have to design in this uh, multimodal way. Uh, it, maybe we have we have to think about the people who have intellectual impairment. Depend of the of the offer of the job you you, you are offering. The, but the, we have to consider too the easy to read uh, offer. Is um, as I, I told before. Um, uh, we have to to think in multimodal way to to uh, to achieve all the all the possible applicants. Great. And uh, Anna, how, how a big organization as Microsoft is, is, is considering that in the process? This is critical, uh, Eduardo. And, uh, and there is something that uh, that I would like to, to reinforce, as Jesus said, okay? So, or that the job offer itself is inclusive, or we are losing one billion people in the world. One billion guys. So, um, it's, not, it's, it's just about uh, being sure that you have uh, the technology that could support the job offer. But, uh, in Microsoft, we uh, create something that I would like to share with you that we call it employee as a recruiter. Okay, it's like uh, to put the voice of the people that we already is hired in Microsoft. Okay, and they could talk, okay, from their experience. Okay, and uh, we are putting in the job offer, not just uh, the part of the um, accessibility, we are putting the experience of these people. Okay, so we are putting like uh, 
a link to a video of a person that uh, uh, is doing something in Microsoft, okay, with our technology and, and could have uh, things related to accessibility, or it could be re related to religion or gender or whatever. But in this case that we are talking about uh, disability, super important to have the concept of the employee as a recruiter, because uh, based on the experience, the people could uh, understand that the, it is important to have the voice of the vulnerability and apply to positions despite that you have a disability or not. Okay, so for the job offer is to open our mind and not just put uh, all, all our efforts in the pure letter. Okay, it's about uh, the experience that the person could uh, uh, have. Interesting. And, and uh, Jesus, uh, I mean, maybe maybe a big corporation as Once you have your own uh, processes and you are very uh, sensitive to that. But other organizations, how they could face that? Uh, they should take into account other maybe companies that they perform that or? No, I think it, there are a lot of companies that they, they, they don't they, they don't have done the, this this kind of job, and we help other other organization to to improve their their process, uh, the the interview, uh, how to communicate with the uh, people with the disability. We are working on that in that area because uh, sometimes the big organization or organization are a little bit afraid about uh, about that uh, to to confront the, this this kind of a of a situation. So maybe sometimes it's. Uh, uh, I think it's more the, the fret about the, that than the, the reality, because it's quite easy if you have in mind the, the different areas to to put in in work. So you, you, you act sometimes as a consultant for all the companies, I guess. Yeah, we are working as. Oh a, yes, <laughs> oh yes. I would say that the, in our case, for example, in in Microsoft, uh, we hire a person with the deaf and blind. And it was uh, Fundación Once and Once who support us in all the journey. So it was incredible the work that they did to support us in learning. Because you consider that, ah, this is a journey and it's easy, you know, come on. The experience is in these companies and, and, and it was amazing the work that uh, Fundación Once was uh, doing for us. Okay, so I think that this is a work of uh, joint venture for all the companies. Hmm. Yeah. That's Sorry. So, sorry, this this knowledge, I mean, these these different views are <clears throat> key for companies for as uh, us in, in our case, for instance, for Samsung, we need the view of all the different people that uh, that surround us, because if not, we cannot make proper products. That mm -hmm. is, we, we try to make a product that suits everybody, that everybody can use. If you are lacking all these different views, we cannot, uh, we can, we can just don't reach all the people we want to reach. We, we, we need um, uh, a technology that facilitates uh, the um, ease of this barrier and breaks this barrier so that get, we can approach each other now uh, more than ever with this COVID situation. So if we don't take in all this knowledge, all these different views, we don't get to the universal design. We really need to make a, a proper product so that it can be delivered as it should. It's technology for all, for everybody, that everybody can use, be at hand. So Samsung there works really hard in this in this way we have um in spain we are we are now um we have all all these the different projects under an umbrella of uh, technology with purpose that uh, d develops um, areas like accessibility or education uh, among others but some of them uh, like in accessibility we've been collaborating with with fundacion about i don't know it's six years <laughs> now jesus more or less uh, we are very good partners so uh, mm -hmm. microsoft samsung and we are i think we are well doing a great uh, job and we can show and uh, all around the world uh, the work we have we have done and uh, together in spain yeah yeah all this all this yeah. input that we are receiving it's it's um, uh, it's improving our devices so that we can we can make it better and we are learning also how to focus on new enterprises for instance we are now focusing on a new uh, collaboration with a partner ensuring that our devices are compatible with hearing aids so um, all this uh, enriches and finally makes a, a, a product that intakes all these different views all the all the different needs Mm. And there is something that, that I would like to to, um, to reinforce to uh, uh, Eduardo, really related to what Larry is saying about technology, is that the, when we are talking about the job offer, 
okay? We should have stopped thinking just about uh, a post in a place, okay? And, and we will need to open our mind and create processes, okay, before the job offer, okay? So uh, I, I could uh, uh, share the, the example that uh, we were working uh, 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 with the different, even Fundación Monfe and, and most probably Samsung, okay, because we have the devices. It's about creating, um, like, um, yeah, recruiting processes, okay, where we are focusing, for example, in cognitive service, uh, cognitive uh, um, uh, disabilities, okay? And we create a process completely different. So it's not about the job offer. We are not looking to a role itself. We are trying to look for talent, okay? So open our mind, try to think more about uh, what is the talent that we could have uh, with people that have co cognitive disabilities, and we create the process itself based on this uh, uh, um, environment, okay? And we use technology, as Lara said, okay? So we mm. can put in place what we saw in this process so the people could see that they could be inclusive, okay? And, and, and we can go for this. So for me, another recommendation would be don't put every effort in the job offer, okay? So create a pipe, uh, show your culture in the company, because this will give the people the option to believe that they could apply to a position in any of our companies, okay? So it's a reflection I would like to share with you. Hmm. Th thank you, Anna. So I guess that uh, the first stage, moreover, we have very interesting topics. Maybe uh, let me to, to switch to, to Javi, and he will show us how is the picture is moving forward. Good. We, are, we have to share the, the screen. That's it. Mm -hmm. See, so zero barriers, design your offer. We are in the same stage. Fundación Once is a, 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 an important player helping others for, for, for design the process, because if we do not, we are losing 1 billion people, as, uh, as Anna said, no? 20% of the talent. And we have to start before position or posting the, the job offer. It's something that has to, to be included also in the culture, no? So I think mm -hmm. it's, it's well, I mean, any comment from, from you? Well done. <laughs> very good, very good. Incredible, the way that you could summarize and put so beautiful and smart. <laughs> Fantastic job, Javi. So let's, let's switch to the, to the other step. So now we have already, design the job offer, we have some candidates, and now we are in the stage of, of interviewing. We need to interview the candidates. Uh, so let's, let's discuss about this process. Uh, the, the process of uh, the, the, the candidate has to maybe to, to go to the, our offices, has to be accessible, and we need to make the environment accessible. So uh, let's talk about that. So Jesus, your experience on that. And the, first of all, you have to, you have, to have a building accessible for for people with the physical impairment, the wheelchairs and other kind of, of disabilities. But uh, you have the, the I think the most important is the the the, the recruiter, the people who are, who who do the, the, the interview to to know uh, everything about the, 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 the disability, you know. And uh, sometimes we have problems with the sign language uh, users. Uh, and uh, this is uh, sorry a problem so you, you have to, to think about that and um, uh, to, if it's necessary to, to hire a service of a sign language uh, tra translator. Um, sometimes uh, we, we interview people with intellectual uh, disability or mental health uh, uh, impairment. And uh, you have to think about that. About that. And uh, you have to train the, the interviewer to, to, to take that in, uh, in mind. This is very, very important. And, uh, and um, they train them to do the right questions. And sometimes a bad question um, uh, could be a very, very, very bad thing. I think this is the most important thing to take into account. Good point to train interviewer. So Anna, how, how you face that in Microsoft? You are muted. Yes, thank you very much. <laughs> this is the uh, the most used uh, uh, sentence uh, with the pandemic. You are on mute. <laughs> 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 thank you very much. So yes, uh, um, I think that there are two things. Okay, like Jesus said, uh, uh, we have a program that we call accommodations. Okay, that uh, of course we offer to the the person who is going to be interviewed. 
okay, to, to and, and but we are intentional in asking because uh, I don't know why, but uh, even during the pandemic, uh, because when you are moving to the physical environment, okay, you go to the office, it's like easier, okay, because we have everything prepared, okay, for people with disability. But during the pandemic, we ask to uh, ourselves, okay, it's like, hey, ask for it, be intentional about uh, asking if you will need accommodation, because accommodation could be activate caption in teams, okay, for the people to read it, or it could be yes, uh, to be sure that this person, as uh, Jesus said, could be not just uh, uh, something physical, it could be something mental, okay? And we need to be sure that, that these people has a different uh, uh, interviews, okay? So we have a program that was a, a, a call for us, like it's related to neurodiversity, hiring events. And in this case, instead of having one-to-one -one interviews that are, are scared for the people with this uh, type of disabilities, we put a, a team of people and we do team plays and, and, and things like this. Okay, so I fully agree with the Jesus that we will need to adapt, okay, to the to the way that we interview, okay, uh, 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 depending of the people that we could have there. And we would like to go forward this, okay, because do you think that this is inclusive? In the end, we are putting some people with the same disability in a, in a specific uh, way of interviewing. We are trying to grow even more how to be sure that these people could be with all the people, okay, that didn't have disability, okay, that they could feel 100% inclusive, okay? But, uh, yeah, truly believe that, that, that we require intentional action, okay, to put in place. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, I agree with you mostly. This idea of us training the interview, uh, I'm thinking about, uh, I don't know, a situation in which the interviewer perceives a person with he hearing loss or... Or, or visual loss, uh, at loss. and uh, maybe we have some tools at hand that we can sort out this problem. For instance, we have these uh, instant transcriptions on just the mobile or just um, sharing a big screen to enlarge images, but the problem is just this. We, um, we, we haven't trained people, we haven't let people know that some of these tools are already available and are really handy. But uh, we haven't created the awareness or the or the or the communication enough of the of of being these tools available, so we can sort out these these problems in the process of an interview or any other. But but particularly in this in this situation, which it could ease and solve a, a really um, awful experience both for the interviewer and the interviewee. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, you mean technology is there, but we are not communicating or, uh, properly, no? We, we are yes. Some tools are really at hand. We have lots of built-in features, but but people do not know they are there, and and yeah. even there is a long way still to walk. We already have many tools that we can we can we can use, but it's it's a problem of. I mean, I'm I'm talking about us. We should probably expand and let others know and communicate more about what we already have, so that we all know them and can use them. Yeah, critical to create awareness. I fully agree with Lara, because, you know, there are a lot of temporary uh, um, disabilities. So the other day I remember um, um, a situation that we were interviewing a person, okay, and uh, no disability at all initially, okay, but this person was at home with a, a, a small kid, okay, and, and she, the, the kid was all the time coming back to the interview, coming back, uh, and the person was super nervous. I was like, let's stop for a minute. Take the kid in your hands and please, we can do this with the subtitles all the time. Okay, don't worry. So use the subtitles. Subtitles that were thought for people with disability could be used for a temporary disability. So disability should not be just something stopping. It could be something that is happening in a moment. So I, I, I agree with Lara. We would need to open our mind to create awareness in the community of the of the of our own companies to be sure that technology is used even for people that has temporary disabilities, because this will be really an inclusive way of hiring. Yeah, yeah. Fully mm -hmm. agree with you, Lara. <clears throat> and another thing that we see is that calling features for disability is is something that that brings people backwards. I mean, where is the border where you start being uh, having a disability? I mean, it, it, we everybody has a special need. I mean, obviously there are different degrees with different needs, but I'm thinking about 
myself. I'm not very tall. So when I go into a bus, there's no way I can hold myself from the top bar of the of the bus. So it's something that, of course, I, I, I'm, I'm going to fall. I mean, this is stupid, but most uh, maybe um, in the buses, we should have a stripe to hold ourselves, all of them. And all of them are ramp to allow people in wheelchairs to go up. So it's just um, to show everybody that we are all very alike. I mean, there is not a border in between you can use it because you have these and you cannot use it because, I mean, we just have to, I think awareness and, and understanding each other and letting people know more about each other is what is going to be key for the spreading of the knowledge of these of these features and, and, and well, to, to, to ease all these barriers that we are talking about all the time. Mm. Fully agree. Mm. Yeah, really, and flexibility and empathy is very, very... Oh, yes, empathy, yes. Yeah. Critical. Exactly. We talk about the, uh, being an ally, you know, allyship and ally, that is so, uh, like, a really fashion word, but it's about what you said, Jesus, okay, with empathy is the only way that you could really connect with any person, and um, the disability could be permanent or could be just temporary. Yeah, yeah very good. Yeah, understand the, their needs and uh, put in their shoes. And at the end, with the commitment is that, uh, as you mentioned, that if we create environments that are accessible for people with disabilities, are also more efficient for people without disabilities. Uh, so this is something that uh, mm -hmm. yeah, is, is, is important and is, is in the benefit of all the society. No? So something that but even for the company, I think, uh, uh, Eduardo, one thing that we realize is what Lara and, and Jesus already commented: how you could be sure that your your People are ready for create this uh, uh, inclusive way of uh, uh, having the accommodation for the people when they are coming to the interview, empowering them despite that they could not answer the questions because uh, they, they are more nervous in general than the, the other people, okay, because of a lack of self-confidence. So I think that this is really critical, okay, so that we truly believe that, that, this, could, that this is doable and that we, uh, we put the empathy Okay, of listening, of understanding, and all this stuff. Okay, so and for this, we will need to train our staff. This is for sure. Yeah. Let, let me reinforce it as uh, Eduardo said about the, the accessibility is good for all, all the company. For example, captioning in this kind of uh, of meetings, uh, the subtitles is very useful for for everybody. You know, if the people who don't know very 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 well the, the the language is very very useful for mm. for everybody it's just an example i have a lot mm -hmm. of example about that mm -hmm. yeah right. we usually use it uh, jesus uh, um in our communication to customers for example and at the beginning we're using because of the options of accommodation okay to be sure that the people that could not see could read them but the reality is that the people are using because they could not understand very well english and yeah. uh, you can use it even if you activate the subtitles in PowerPoint, for example, something that we discovered in the last uh, two months in terms of how to use it is about uh, I'm talking with someone who didn't talk English. So I'm talking in Spanish and the other person has the subtitles in Brazilian and, and you could talk. And, and so th there is a really, really uh, a space that the technology could give you. Yeah, really. How do you think about For it? disability uh, and non disabilities? OK, for everyone. I think you, you have finished. Uh, have you think about a, a mortgage or an insurance contract in easy to read? Is is a good for everybody? For example, no. Mm. Yes. Mm. Mm. Since we we are trying to work also about this easy to read because uh, we deal with manuals of of, uh, of how to use technology, and sometimes they are so difficult to understand. We are we are working on this easy to read version so that uh, sometimes mm, trying to figure out how to work with something it's not that it's difficult itself it's that the way it is explained it's not the proper one so moving into an appropriate way that easy to read way of, of explaining things makes uh, things more accessible for everybody and another thing i think is that is critical uh, um, is the experience that this person will bring to the market so if the experience that we create, Eduardo, is the right one for this person, this person will go later on to their own disability forums and will say, come on, we could do this. Come on, uh, try to apply to this position in Samsung, in Fondación, in whatever it could be the company, because I feel safe there. 
okay, our culture is so in these interviews, okay, and, and this is the, another way to empower the people to continue applying and, 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 and learn things because they consider that they could be part of these companies. Okay, so to create the, this experience, I think is vital even for the culture that we could create in the country, in the companies, or uh, uh, um, in the society, I would say. Okay, mm -hmm. so this is a social commitment that we, 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 we should achieve as, uh, as all, okay? Eduardo, let's uh, have a look to the drawings. To the <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Javi, let's share with us what you, you are writing. I guess interesting. So we discuss about many topics. So <laughs> fantastic. So we are now in the interview process. It's create uh, a great experience wow. for time. Mm -hmm. There are many tools available, and we have to use them and to and to um, communicate them. Of course, as Jesus said, we need to stand on the issues. Important raise awareness. It's important to get empathy, understand disabilities, train the interviewers. Important. Also, we need to get people trained to understand to get empathy on what we are doing. Fantastic. So I think uh, it includes uh, all our thoughts. Moreover, no. Oh yes, it oh, does. Yes. It does. You are a master of the, 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 the design and listening. Come on. <laughs> yeah, listening and understand. Thank you, Javi. Thank you. So, so we cover the the, the, the second step, and maybe now, of course, uh, we have done. We have designed the interview process. We did the interview process itself, and we had the candidate. And now it's time that the candidate has to be incorporated into our company. So how should be this process? How we could make that this new employee uh, is part of the, all the team? So Lara, how your experience in Samsung, how, how you face that stage? Um, we've, uh, we've discussed, well, as, uh, we've discovered that the technology is going, to, is going to accompany the the new person in their new role, and of course there are many different types of roles. We can think of I don't know um, an executive role, field uh, worker, um, sales. Uh, there are many different types of of of, of roles in, to which we have to adapt our technology. That is probably I'm thinking about examples of devices, devices that are, that an executive would bring with themselves. It's um, a premium phone that, as we were talking before, built in accessible technologies, and they are going to have um, a seamless uh, connection with a wearable, also with the accessibility features in it. But if we move to um, not sales, but a field worker who is all the time in the street. Um, we would need something completely different. For, for instance, we would go for a tablet, but it is not only technology or devices itself that are going to make uh, the work environment properly, but we also have to think in the accessories that could ease also this uh, process. For instance, um, I'm thinking about a case we were we were collaborating with another uh, with another company in, in which this case they they help you holding the tablet just with with one hand and also there is a, a, a intelligent assistant that, so that you can use the tablet just with your voice so all this um, um, working all together is taking in all together taking into account um, things that other companies may do are going to accommodate and help uh, having and using the proper tools you you need to use so uh, dragging all these accessibility features from one place to another not losing them on the way but adapting them in every environment i think it's key for anybody to adapt to any any working position anna how do you perform that in microsoft how do you adapt work places um, we are just at the beginning of the journey. For me, this is a journey, a, a full journey. So that uh, it depends on every person, okay, uh, on the, the type of disability. Um, you know, um, if I could share my own experience at the beginning, we focus when we have a, a person with disability uh, in my team. The first thing that we focus was in the building. It was everything was about the building, okay. So if the person could access to the I don't know, the bathroom, the kitchen, the microwaves, uh, the dog that the person was uh, bringing to the office. So, and, and we never realized that it was just 
of the of the journey that we will need to, to go. Okay, because it's more about how to integrate this person, how this person will not be the the person with disability. Okay, and that, and this is where uh, technology, uh, the, the the partnership with the Fundación Once and companies that have the experience help us a lot. Okay, so we create uh, a specific readiness. Okay, uh, uh, for the people. Okay, to be sure that they know what the, this is a type of disability could mean. We put this person to train us. Okay, to, to, to understand what are the needs that they have. Okay, and of course we started to show her or him what are the technologies that we do have. Okay, immersive reading. Uh, it could be uh, that what you what uh, um, uh, Larry said that this is a device that you can use. Uh, all the things uh, that we could have. And one thing that uh, I, I could feel really, really proud, okay, and I will foster in the rest of the company is to, to do hackathons. Okay, so that uh, because one thing that we discover is how we could help a person, okay, for example, blind, if uh, it's happening something and you could not see it. Okay, and uh, well, there was an employee in a hackathon that uh, we put this challenge to all the company, and there was a um, a, an employee who created a, a power. That is a very simple application, okay, that uh, a person could just uh, push the, the application and someone could help. So uh, this is something that uh, that uh, we truly um, believe is that we will need to create, okay, environment, but together with the people who are around this person, okay, using always the technology, the device, devices, but for sure the experiences of, of putting the person on board. Because another thing that uh, we were not talking is that to put this person on board, place the customer team. Okay, that uh, this person will need to be in front of the customer, and the customer should be flexible too for this. Okay, so I, I, I think that this is a journey. If I could summarize this, Eduardo, we are doing a lot of things. Okay, but uh, there is a long journey. Okay, in the in the way to, to make these people an, an inclusive environment. I think it's a really good point you now to learning from the user and how the organization should adapt. I think Jesus, you are uh, expert on this. <laughs> yeah. No? yeah, we have uh, a lot of experience in, in this topic, but we, we find out uh, we find out uh, some some companies the pain point is when they have to spend money in the adaptation. No, for example, uh, make works uh, for the accessibility in the building or invest in the technical devices eh, or, or devices eh, or tools, eh, for example, a special mouse or other kind of uh, assistive, assistive uh, products. Eh, we, as uh, we discovered the, the situation, we, we have a lending bank of uh, technical products or assistive uh, products to lend to the companies, lend to the universities for the students or for the workers when they start to work and they need for example a special mouse we lend to the company this special mouse the worker try with that and if this kind of device is good for for for, for the worker we lend for a temporary maybe six months or something like this and after that they have to 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 buy the this this device, no. So um, we we start with this uh, with this sol solution with this uh, lending bank uh, to to help the companies to to be to be easy the the income to the people, no. Mm -hmm. And in that uh, purpose, uh, Jesus, we were talking last time about the new law of accessibility law that Europe is, is going to, to move. I mean, it was presented and accepted in 2019, now it's allowed, and in 2022 has to be adapted. So how, how this will change, adapt to, or help on this process? I think it will be help a lot. And now we, we are uh, next week, uh, we'll have the disability strategy in Europe. Uh, um, the, the, the Commission is uh, working on uh, on that, but the European Accessibility Act, uh, I think, it will be very, very important, not just for European uh, citizens, uh, just for all the um, all the citizens in the world, because all the companies who are um, manufacturing in, the, in in different devices, especially technical technical solutions, software and, and hardware, they have to introduce the the accessibility and uh, to develop the, them uh, with the 
uh, principles of uh, universal design. And uh, this will be very, very important because uh, if you introduce the accessibility at the moment of the design, it's very, very easy and oh, yeah. very cheap. Uh, it's not um, more, more expensive the, uh, to, to obtain all the, the device, accessible device. No? So the, the Open Accessibility Act, uh, I think, it, it will be a very, a very, very good uh, uh, question, solution for, for everybody. Yeah. Yes, and for technological companies, as we, I'm oh, sorry, as a technological company, we've been following this, uh, this law since, uh, since it was uh, drafted at the beginning, and we have been adapting, and, and as you say, and, and we said at the beginning, from the very beginning, we have to conceptualize the product um, as a universal product to take into account uh, these accessibility features. It's just one more feature, so at the manufacturing moment, it's not going to, uh, raise the cost or anything like that. It's going to be the same device, but with different features that you can turn on or off as you wish. And 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 like that, uh, have um, as devices, web pages, and and the rest of the of the um, uh, computer or or the informatic um, uh, solutions that we mean or sources that we use. Mm. In in our case, and I fully agree with, with you both. In our case, uh, even when we are developing a solution. Uh, Eduardo, uh, now we are putting accessibility uh, as a part of the, 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 the initial architecture that we are presenting. Okay, and then with uh, a cherry on the cake, is that not just to make it accessible because of, to be compliance, okay, with the, the new rules, is how to make it accessible for people with disability. That this is another space to, to, to run, okay, so there are rules that you will need to be and to put in place in your design of the products and solutions. And another thing is that how to be sure that this is universal, as Lara said, that is not specific for blind people, it's not specific for people with disability physically, it's for everyone. Okay, so to elevate the accessibility to accessibility for all. And I think that the, we have a huge accountability, companies like uh, Samsung, like uh, Onze or SAS, on making this from the first minute, as Jesus said. Because at the beginning is nothing, it's just mo one more feature. In the end, it's a huge investment of money that perhaps you didn't have, okay? And it doesn't make sense. So and fully I, agree that, that you wanted to start from the beginning. And, and I really agree with you. It's not the, the cherry in the cake. It's the cherry in the cake is, must be part of the recipe. Mm. Yeah, this is completely agree, Jesus. So it, could not, it should not be an option, <laughs> okay? So, so that right now it looks like uh, it's an option, but uh, I think that uh, I could represent the technology companies in general, that uh, we are changing our culture to be sure that it's part of uh, our way of working, okay? So that the employee is going to ask for this in every role that they are doing, okay? There was a, a, something that uh, we started this year, and, and I would like to share with you, is that we are uh, promoting in all the employees worldwide to pass the accessibility batch, okay? Is something really short, not, um, not any more than one hour time that talk about different types of disabilities and all the compliance things that, the, the, as a company, we will need to follow. And it's a question of creating the awareness because this is part of the culture. So if you put this in the culture of the employees and in the culture of the companies, because we are partners and working together, tomorrow everyone will ask for it because this is part of what the, the new generation are asking for, okay? So that yeah. uh, this is another thing really important. <laughs> yes, it has to be a must feature. We are we are training with the, with, with the courses uh, um, carried out by Fundacion Once, we are training our staff in the, in shops so that uh, when people arrive and, and ask for uh, a feature that it's specifically for, for something, they can go right there and, and inform and create awareness and inform the, the customer of what we already have, which is a bit in the line of what we've been talking before. Mm. It's important also for the audience to understand that this is not a theoretical level. I mean, the, the thing no, no. we are here, I mean, the Fundación Oncea, of course, is, is collaborating and creating very actively uh, inclusive jobs. For example, Microsoft uh, is promoting hackathons. We know, for example, in, in the US, the mm -hmm. Team Lincoln Foundation has created a hackathon to, to make uh, possible to control an, a, a wheelchair with the eyes, for example, with eye tracking. Yes. Or Samsung with uh, with technología con propósito, they are doing incredible things, things that are already in the market. So it's important to understand that uh, should be a, a theoretical level, but also we need to 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 create 
technology and solutions, and we are doing that. And I truly believe that uh, we, we need to run the same uh, journey that the sustainability is doing. Yeah, because sustainability now is in every uh, company conversation in terms of the economical uh, point of view, not just uh, uh, about the social impact. It's about the, the how we will need to face this. I think that we should elevate accessibility in the same way. Okay, so accessibility should be part of the conversation from the business decision makers, okay, as a critical point, as a sales differentiator. Yes, okay. I think that the, the key there is sustainability um, impacts everybody. And mm -hmm. we, are, we are assuming that accessibility does not impact everybody when this is not true. So I think that in the moment that we are aware and make aware of all the people that this is something that is going to impact on your life, on everybody's life, then oh, yes. this, this uh, position on politicians will probably change and follow the, the path that sustainability has, fo has followed. Mm. Fully agree. Fully agree. So, okay. Accessibility for all is the thing, right? That's it. That's it. <laughs> yeah, right. So I think everybody is nervous to see what's happening on the other side, on the, on the picture. Sure. Let's you. with Javi and to show what's going on. So with your time, Javi, let's see. Almost all we cover all the process, the three stages in the process. Maybe we can share the screen. There are so many things that the, the, the technology is not supporting. That. <laughs> wow. So we went wow. designing Incredible. the job offer the interview and now we are in the candidate integration that's it so we have to adapt our working position we have to co-create important uh, concept co-create together with the user uh, and the team has to be involved on that as well of course understand which are the disabilities and the abilities of course and and work with all the tools and accessories that uh, they are in the market and also apply to, to them and learn from them i think is one of the keys learn from them to to try to understand uh, how we should adapt the technology to the benefit, no? Change our culture, the great and Thank you, Harry. We have said wow. a lot of things, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's almost finished. I mean, I, I understand that there is no much empty space there to, to adapt. <laughs> yeah, right. Let, let me say the one thing more. Uh, there are a very important lack about the um, the accessibility in the, the university. There are no education, no training, no no curricula about uh, or not enough uh, curricula about accessibility in the in the university. But all of our engineers, our our architects, so everybody uh, have knowledge about disability, about the uh, accessibility, not just the disability, about accessibility for everybody. Um, uh, will have another another world, a different world, because uh, the ADN of the of the professional is made at the university. So we have to change this ADN at the university. Mm. The awareness, uh, the everything. Is, Fully uh, agree. Fully agree, and, and, and I would like to complement this uh, with the, that we need to empower the people with disability to believe that they could be as anyone who is at the university or studying or uh, learning languages, because this is another thing that uh, is di really difficult to find people that uh, believe that they could do it, okay? And, and, and come on, if there are one million, two billion, these people could do it, and you will have a specialization. It doesn't matter what it could be, where you could be really good and talented. So I think I agree with Jesus that we will create, we will need to create the, the awareness at the university and at the same time to train the people, to empower the people with disabilities to truly believe from the from the school that they have talent that they will need to develop. Okay, and that there are technology and companies that truly believe that this will happen. Okay, but uh, they will need to yeah to to put their voice there. Okay, and and and. and perhaps betraying on vulnerability, Jesus, right? <laughs> like we are vulnerable and, and we will need to do this, okay? So the voice is there, we will need to listen to this voice. So maybe now we have, I think, 10 minutes left. Uh, I don't know if we have uh, some questions for the audience. Uh, if, if not, we will get, let's now this time to, to, to get the, the question from the audience. Uh, and meanwhile, 
So anybody that wants to, to have a, or, or give a question, please uh, raise your hand uh, virtually, of course. <laughs> and, and we will try to listen to you. And, and of course, if you have the opportunity to having these three fantastic panelists here in the, in the round table. Mm -hmm. So don't, don't lose this opportunity. M meanwhile, I will, I will, while we receive any question, I will say, um, uh, I mean, we are working on, on the first world, let me say, on, on adding this kind of, uh, of uh, policies. And, but uh, Zero Project is very focused also, not only in the first uh, world, but also in the development countries. So how, which message we could send to these people on these development countries uh, on, on inclusion? Maybe Jesus uh, or whatever you want. I, I, I let the, the, the floor, uh, I pass the floor to Anna or to, or to Lara, because uh, you, you work with the uh, developed countries, no? Anna? Oh, yes. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, so the, I, I mean that the, my answer would be technology is in the hands of everyone. OK, so I think that uh, Lara has been talking about this, uh, uh, myself has been talking about this. Uh, technology is there, and it's not just technology for disability. OK, so it's like technology, like the digital transformation is starting even from Internet for connecting to do uh, um, um, uh, something to search for something, to use the, the screen reader uh, to to uh, to really elevate more than just uh, read. OK, so it's go and use the technology, OK, because the technology will give you as a development country, OK, the opportunity to go to this digital transformation. Don't think so big to think, oh, no, we don't have resources, we cannot do this. Come on, start from the education, go to the uh, people and show them what they could do, even for just a Windows or, or a, a Microsoft Teams or whatever, that they are free software. OK, so there are a lot of software that is for free that you can use OK, to develop yourself, to integrate people that you could have with disabilities in these countries and be sure that they can develop their talent. With this, the next will come because there are so many opportunities remotely. Come on, guys. Pandemic was not good. OK, but uh, if there is a benefit of the pandemic is that we really realize the the huge amount of development that we could do remotely. So let's use it, guys, because Internet connection will give you just the opportunity to develop. Yes, and, and learn from our mistakes. I mean, don't make me the same mistakes we've already done. So if we could go to education, to the very beginning of education, as you were mentioning before, um, be, try to make people aware that the reality is not just the one that appears in the adverts. Reality goes far beyond that. So there are many different types of people that uh, they are very much alike of us than people from the adverts and that we should know that, encourage that and, and use technology, use uh, all our knowledge to just ease these barriers. Now it's easier than it was before, so let's take advantage of it and, and really learn from it. Which this, I hope we could, we could at least ease that way. Mm. And learn about the success too, because we develop <laughs> many, many standards and we, we develop many researches about accessibility, so uh, we have done. Mm. Just applicate. Yeah, and open your mind in general, because uh, as I said, uh, now that you can do things remotely, find a mentor. So I, uh, we, we truly believe uh, for, for job posting, for all these type of things, go to the market and find a mentor in other companies, in other uh, uh, countries. It doesn't matter that you are based in, uh, in, a, in a country that is not in development, but you could connect with someone who is in another country and, and share experiences. And you know, we always think that, we, uh, you, that, that they could learn from us. Come on, this is not uh, true. We can learn from them, okay? And, and what Lara said, uh, it's a question of learning together OK, but listening about the experience that they have. OK, and we can connect both things, the learnings that they have uh, because of the, the lack of uh, resources and the way that we proceed and we could create something together. Hmm. Partners, I think, is critical. Hmm. Hmm. Did we, we answer your question, Eduardo, or not? Yeah, sure. Or give me the money, one thing <laughs> that we could do. <laughs> sure. Sorry, we have a, 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 a question from the audience. This 
is on the chat or, or the person is going to unmute? Uh, okay. no, with the question, this one. Flamerino. Yeah. Oh. Yes, if we got. Hi. 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 Hey. Hi, hello, Cara. You can hello. Uh, well, my question is, you were talking about um, temporary disabilities or so it made me think about mental illnesses such as anxiety.